and uh, we will start with the meeting. Hello, uh, can everyone hear us? Yeah, 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 yes, Shervari. Yes, can, can you? Can you? Can you? Hello. I think we are facing a technical problem. Uh, there is some issue with uh, Teams. That's the reason there is a lot of echo. Uh, just give us a few minutes. Uh,
Uh, Santa, can you try talking now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can I can I, I can see that there is not echo right now. There is no echo now. Okay. Good. Yes, Great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, today's webinar is on sustainable product initiative and digital product uh, passport. The webinar will be conducted by Santanan Chanmugam, our director CTO, and Mr. Gaurav Thakre, our lead uh, senior lead for uh, environment compliance. Uh, the presentation will be for 30 to 40 minutes followed by uh, Q&A uh, towards the end of the webinar. Uh, in between, if you have think of any questions, you can put it in the chat window. And uh, we will be uh, answering them at the end of the webinar. OK, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sherwari. Um, uh, good day, all, and good evening, all. Good afternoon, all uh, people. Uh, thank you uh, for joining from different parts of the world. Thank you. And um, I'm Santanand, uh, director, one of the director. So I need not want to take much time because it's already we have passed seven minutes. Uh, sorry for the technical glitch. Um, we did not uh, realize that uh, we are going to have a problem like this. Uh, we will get into the uh, topics uh, real quick and I will uh, take you forward soon. So this is the quick uh, agenda uh, we are going to discuss uh, on this today. Uh, uh, the introduction, what Islands does and uh, what Islands offer, and we are going to talk about the uh, European Green Deal, Circular Economy, Sustainable Product Initiative, Eco Design, and uh, DPP, and Digital Product Passport and uh, we will be having the Q&A. So move on, moving on to the next slide. Um, Sherwari, can you get uh, on to the yes. next slide? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so our uh, this is a quick overview of what islands is this um say uh, uh, we uh, we provide innovative and comprehensive engineering services digital services and solutions uh, we have major two divisions uh, it's uh, services and solutions in services we use uh, we uh, do engineering and immersion, immersive technology and in solutions we have product environmental compliance and the component obsolescence management and we are located uh, our head offices in Hyderabad and we have uh, other offices one down south in India Coimbatore and uh, we have offices in US and we are going to have one more office in Europe very soon um, and we are uh, 400 plus team uh, we have significant amount of uh, people in engineering and uh, say product development, uh, electronics and computer science and uh, say into the product environmental compliance and obsolescence uh, management. We are an ISO 9000 certified company and uh, we mostly, uh, our major portion of our projects are uh, uh, towards the medical devices. So uh, we are having ISO uh, 1430, 14, um, 13485 certified uh, company and some of our major customers uh, you can see on the right top corner our major customers and uh, our office our corporate office uh, at the bottom uh, right corner we have and we are uh, one of the ipc members uh, as well yeah we can move on to the uh, next slide sherwari yeah Um, uh, in islands, say uh, uh, what are the offerings that you can get from islands? Is uh, the uh, 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 say uh, some of the challenges that what we have uh, found in over a period of uh, years uh, we have uh, uh, consolidated down in these uh, major buckets. Like say uh, some of the challenges, like say the data collection is the uh, 
challenging part war where the customers um, customers face uh, uh, major part of here uh, the customers are facing significant amount of problems so that is the key one the right data right information from the uh, suppliers and the manufacturers and then uh, once we get the data we validate the data because it is more important that whatever the data that is being collected is uh, right and uh, it is uh, uh, which is, which is suitable for the customer. So we validate the data and we then we standardize the data and we move the standardized data into a manageable solution where we have uh, a tool. Uh, we call it a science compliance tool where we upload all the data and we will handle the data there. And we do uh, the risk assessment for the components where we do not have any data about it. So we will have whatever the information that we get from the uh, in uh, in-house team. Uh, we try to gather most of the details and we will uh, do a risk assessment based on the risk assessment. We will see that uh, how uh, we can uh, take it to the next level so that we, we make it 100 percentage compliance. And uh, we always see that say there new regulation comes and uh, even for uh, reach regulation every six months there will be a new candidate release will be released and so being that so uh, being said that so we can see that everything is in a uh, continuous monitoring continuous uh, it's a kind of cycle continuous cycle say so we have to re look into the data every time get the right data from the suppliers and manufacturers and we support um, say these are the challenges and uh, these are the uh, finances support that what we do and apart from that it's say we uh, support on the conflict minerals and data collection say reporting to uh, for us and european requirements yeah we can move on to the next slide so this is a quick uh, overview of uh, the uh, key features that what the compliance manager tool has say uh, uh, importing the bomb and uh, uh, say manufacturing uh, manufacturer contact uh, say with the manufacturer contact details and uh, say uh, it uh, say email uh, to suppliers from the compliance for the compliance requests directly from the tool and storing the compliance data in the uh, software tool and then get into the uh, 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 say regulations say with the new regulations uh, and uh, the upcoming regulations we uh, look into the data and uh, we add into the tool for the for the regular updates and uh, the tool can submit create dossiers and uh, submit uh, the skip submission from the tool itself and we can generate reports risk assessment everything can be done within the tool so this is a quick uh, overview uh, of uh, what we do and now uh, so shall we can you move on to the next slide shall can you move on to the next slide yeah okay fine so, uh, uh, so this is our main topic, uh, the European Green Deal. So uh, what is European Green Deal? So when we look at uh, the, uh, we would have heard, say everyone would have heard uh, many a times, like say uh, we are seeing a lot of changes in the climate. So, uh, and the environmental degradation, uh, which is uh, across the globe and uh, to overcome these uh, challenges say uh, european union is uh, forefronting this like say the european commission has come up with a, uh, a strategy strategy with uh, called the uh, european green deal which has uh, um, uh, which has uh, uh, many uh, sectors which is affect, going to affect the uh, many uh, sectors to make the european into a modern resource efficient and competitive economy to uh, uh, to achieve the uh, 
climate neutral by 2020, making sure that the net carbon emission is, say, net zero carbon emission by 2050, and uh, say, uh, uh, the economic growth is decoupled from the resource use, making sure that, say, uh, we use the uh, less, very less natural resources and uh, to recycle whatever it is uh, existing around and no person and no place is left behind here. So it is, say, uh, the new rules are to empower the consumers in the green transition, making sure that all the companies and uh, the complete ecosystem has to support to achieve this by 2050. So that is what is the uh, European Green Deal uh, talks about. The greenwashing is uh, like say many of the comp products are uh, say which is being imported into the uh, European uh, uh, European Union. Uh, the products are being said that it is the uh, it is a green component or say it's a kind of uh, say uh, uh, it is uh, say as per the European regulation and the requirements everything is passing but when they really look into it it is not that it is like uh, say it is failing in uh, multiple different areas um, so they wanted to address these things and capture these things so that it is not uh, being hit in the European Union. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we look into this uh, uh, framework, so we are able to see there are multiple um, uh, there are multiple policies it is being laid out to achieve this european green deal by 2050 so they wanted to make the climate neutral in 2050 so uh, with these uh, things like say a uh, circular economy and uh, zero pollution making it to zero pollution and then the agricultural uh, transformation and uh, form to fork framework and financing transition, clean energy, clean, affordable, reliable energy, and sustainable transport. So uh, with all these uh, things, um, there are several plans laid out within the European Green Deal. And uh, say so each sector has to go and contribute uh, to their best to achieve this climate neutral by 2050. So, say uh, the source is uh, taken uh, from a, a different uh, place. So the link is provided here, and um, you can move on to the uh, next uh, slide. Yeah. So now he, we will focus only on uh, the uh, couple of specific area. We need. We are not going to get into each and every. Uh, every area. So here we are looking at the uh, European Green Deal, Circular uh, Economy Action Plan, and Eco Design and Sustainable Products and Digital Product Passport. So European deal, Green Deal, mainly say what we are looking at is uh, for the uh, decoupled economy from the use of uh, natural resources. So uh, where uh, the resources are being uh, taken and reused, uh, and we are not going and excavating the new material from the natural resources. So, uh, so that comes your circular economy action plan. So uh, there are 35 actions along the entire life cycle of the product to make it more sustainable and uh, say so, uh, promote the circular economy and increase sustainable consumption. Sustainable consumption is like say what are the bit with the resources available, what is in the market, reuse, reuse, recycle, and reuse. Say it follows the path of the uh, circular economy. The wastes and all those things has to be reduced, and uh, even from the waste, it has to be recycled. And instead of going for a new material, 
it has to be recycled and reused within it. So and that is what is the major plan. So to achieve those things, we uh, they have a policies for eco design and sustainable products uh, initiative. Setting for uh, the performance and the eco design requirements for circularity, energy, energy performance and the environmental sustainability. And when we look at the uh, uh, DPP, so it's uh, the digital product pa passport, which will uh, make it more uh, transparent for all the people for the product, say, which is sold in the uh, European region so that they would be able to they would be able to uh, see the complete uh, drill down of uh, say where they stand for this product where they stand with the uh, circular economy plan yeah okay can you move on to the next slide yeah so this is uh, what we are seeing is a uh, uh, ellen ellen uh, macarthur foundation it's a butterfly uh, diagram so here you can see the uh, uh, here you can see the technical cy cycles on the right and the biological cycles on the uh, left and uh, when we uh, look at the uh, linear flow it uh, say from top to bottom say where the uh, parts uh, parts manufacturers, product manufacturers. Excuse me. Yeah, I wanted to get the control. Uh, Sherwari, you were able to see my uh, cursor moving. Sorry. Yeah. It's a little slow. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now I got it. So, so when we look at here, say, uh, uh, the uh, linear uh, in the linear flow uh, so it's the final uh, element material so it's the uh, parts manufacturers say product manufacturers service providers and the user and the collection and then it goes to the uh, waste so this is the linear flow and in the circular flow here we say the share maintain uh, say the, all these are in the uh, say circular economy will follow this process in the circular form so it goes and comes back and it goes and comes back here so so most of the product materials and uh, say when we talk about say uh, the uh, reuse redistribute and say uh, remanufacture refurbish recycle so all these things say it will go back inside say from there and gets inside so it will be like circular it will form the circular path in each area so that say uh, this is what it is so on the we are not getting more into the uh, biological path say here this is for the biological cycle we mostly we are going to look at the technical cycles for today and reduce the waste so that is the most key part here so sherwati can you move on to the next So here we talk about the circular economy action plan. So when we uh, look at this, say uh, uh, adapted circular economy action plan is adapted in March 2020, and uh, it is one of the main building blocks of the European Green Deal to uh, achieve this uh, 2050 carbon neutral. So when we look at this uh, circular economy, say uh, here we uh, take the uh, material from the natural resources, yeah. it's getting manufactured, consumed and recycled. So this is the most uh, critical one. So uh, here when we look at the new action plan announces initiatives along with the entire life cycle, say um, the products are designed in such yeah. a way that it can be reused and uh, promotes circular economy process and uh, aims to ensure that waste is prevented so reduce the waste and objectives is to make sustainable products 
the uh, norm in the UU. Uh, there are, uh, say, uh, if you guys are already there in the LinkedIn, say there are many uh, uh, in the LinkedIn and the European Union, uh, say there are uh, many products that whichever is coming up like with the 100% recycled product. It is uh, manufactured from the 100% recycled uh, uh, material. So uh, everywhere, uh, say they started, uh, say big companies, they have already started and they started working towards it to make it uh, more circular and environmental friendly. Yeah. So when we look at this uh, uh, timelines, say when it started, it uh, started in 11th March 2020. And uh, so I'm not going to take you through all these things. We will look at the spot, red spot. Say uh, in uh, March 2022, they have uh, introduced the uh, Sustainable Product Initiative. Uh, say uh, it is a proposal for the eco design for sustainable uh, products uh, regulation. They have uh, had the plan in the European Union. And uh, so we will more discuss on this, uh, uh, the eco design uh, and sustainable products in the uh, upcoming uh, slides. Uh, yeah, Sharvari, can you move on to the next slide? Yeah, circular economy initiative, key product chains. Uh, so these are the uh, key products uh, where uh, we can see uh, high sec uh, high circularity is uh, possible. Um, so like uh, textiles, uh, batteries and vehicles, say uh, food, water and uh, nutrients, say uh, packaging industry, construction industry, plastic industry, and electronics industry. Uh, say, I'll just give a quick one example. The plastics, you know, uh, because we uh, we use many plastics every day and uh, the plastics can be recycled and it can be reused in uh, multiple ways. The, uh, say, uh, the, say, which can be uh, used the most resources and uh, say potential for circularity. So uh, that is what it is. Uh, meaning, um, so for all these materials, say when we look at the construction building material, the metals, it can be recycled. So yeah, it can be uh, reformed into a new shape for the requirement. It can be reused. So uh, now I pass on to uh, uh, Gaurav from the uh, next slide. Uh, so you can start with the sustainable product initiative. Yeah. Thank you. Gaurav. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, good evening, and uh, good afternoon, wherever you are uh, located. So, uh, about the Sustainable Product Initiative, uh, what is the need of SPI? So, the Sustainable Product Initiative is a part of um, Circular Economy Action Plan. It's uh, one of the proposals, or it's one of the building blocks. So. Currently in Europe, there is no uh, overarching procedure which which basically drives the sustainability in terms of the production and consumption of all the products. So the sustainable product initiative is basically having the objective like it's to make the products uh, cleaner, the circular and more efficient by setting up the eco design requirements and then improve the product um, environmental sustainability information through, through the digital product passport, which we will see in the next slide and also prevent the destruction of the unsold electronic products and promote the circular trade business models and then also drive the green public procurement. So these are the main objectives of the sustainable uh, product initiative. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, shall we? Can you move to the next slide, Shirvari? Yeah. So we have some polls here, uh, mainly a couple of polls, which will be, uh, you can just put your, um, uh, there is a poll where, what is the average timeline you change the cell phone? So in general, uh, like most of the people, we use the smartphones and uh, we have a defined frequency. You can select like every one year, two year, or every two, three year, or anything uh, which you think which is uh, suitable to you. 
Okay, uh, so we have got the responses. Uh, mostly everyone has responded like uh, every three to five years. Uh, to which we have uh, another uh, question for you. I uh, request you to answer that as well. Yeah. Uh, we what are the main reasons to change your cell phones? Is it uh, the technology change uh, option A? Uh, is it because of the new features and appearances uh, B uh, or is it uh, no report, no repair support or uh, software update from manufacturer option C uh, or is it uh, high repair cost? Okay, so mo uh, Gaurav, most of them have responded saying uh, uh, high repair cost. So in these two surveys, uh, what you have seen, um, like one is about the product durability, which says like uh, we have around that uh, most of the people use the cell phones like two years after two or three years, they will upgrade. And second is uh, speaks about the repairability, right? So uh, basically, why do we change the cell phone because of the higher repair cost? And also the second is basically uh, no repair or software updates from the manufacturer. So what the sustainability as an initiative will do like it will drive this requirements uh, in terms of making the product uh, uh, more uh, uh, durable so what you see uh, the product durability has to be increased so when we say product durability the more durable the product is the uh, like um, indirectly it will have a longer lifespan and it will save the uh, resources so lifetime of the product will reduce and it will reduce the environmental um, uh, consumption. OK, so repairable products. So in terms of repair product, repairing also cuts down the uh, waste by extending the device lifespan by offering a repairability as an instruction, as a document or as a repairable tools. So in France, there is a requirement like a, uh, came in back in 2021, Jan 2021, which applies to almost nine product categories, which which speaks about the product repairability. So there are the documentation and all the requirements mainly defined for another like nine product categories, uh, like the, cell, um, the laptops or the electric lawnmowers. So this repairability index is something that has to be uh, given by the manufacturers to all the users in terms of uh, and the labeling and as well as the documentation. Recyclable product is something product that can be collected, processed and manufactured into new products after they have been used. So recyclable product has to come with a dismantling guide. Uh, that is one of the requirement in this uh, proposal. Prevent packaging waste. So it, when it comes like the, the packaging takes a lot of energy, water and other natural resources to produce uh, the packaging. And it also pollutes the air, water, and soil. So reduce and recycle your packaging waste as much as possible. So the proposal will also drive like uh, the requirement of preventing the packaging waste. So hazardous chemicals. So already you know like uh, uh, there are the restricted substances directive like each ROHS and other uh, other directives. So hazardous chemicals is like disclosure of the substances of concern in the product like reach SVSCs and also prevention of use of the um, substances like an ROHS, like you have lead, mercury and other 10, most of the 10 chemical substances. So hazardous chemicals will drive the requirement to um, avoid using these chemicals in the products. Then the remanufacturing. So in the remanufacturing, the use of the parts by restoring as a new. So basically, uh, um, remanufacturing uh, speaks about um, reusing the parts wherever possible can be reused. Okay, so another is energy efficiency. Energy efficiency, as you know, is like uh, meaning of using less energy to get the same job done, and definitely it will reduce the carbon footprint with the use of less energy. So preferring the energy efficient products is one of the requirement. It is already part of the existing eco design directive. Recycle content. So when it comes to recycle content, this proposal will drive the increasing the recycle content in the product. 
So that means the total percentage of required materials in used in the new product design, including the pre-consumer and post-consumer materials. So goods made from recycled contents definitely use less energy, water, and create less pollution than the fresh or virgin counterparts. So this proposal also uh, concentrate or it will also drive the recycled content requirement. There is circularity. So basically what we already seen in the few slides, uh, what Santa showed, what is the circularity is. So definitely the company and the product uh, has to be circular and they should operate on the circular company model. So what is the environmental impact? So environmental impact speaks about uh, the carbon and environmental footprints of the given product. So you can have the life cycle assessment LCA approach to come up with the what are the environmental impact of the product. And when everything uh, this one is provided by as a documentation approach, if it is defined, then that comes under digital product passport requirements. So when you have a digital product passport, um, all these thing requirements has to be um, provided to the user or the consumer in terms of a digital product passport. So digital products passport is one of the documentation requirement, a key requirement in the circular economy package. Yeah, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So coming back to uh, uh, what is basically the eco design at the sustainable product initiative. So already we have an eco design directive which was pub uh, published uh, back in the 2008 or 9 which is a old directive which covers existing 31 product groups and which is mainly uh, cover in scope the energy related products and it drives the requirement of energy efficiency. So the eco design as a sustainable product initiative will reappeal the existing eco design directive and it will include the environmental sustainability requirements as a part of eco design uh, directive, which will be uh, upcoming proposal, which is under discussion, and eco design requirements will set to improve the circularity, energy performance, and environmental sustainability. So, what you see in the diagram here, like you have eco design directive, and uh, eco design directive will be refilled and it will be amended to include the sustainability requirements. So, the existing scope will be increased with added sustainability requirements for the products. So. Definitely what we see in the earlier slide, all those requirements will come as a part of new eco-design directive, and that will be applicable for the required product groups in the, uh, in the structured manner. Yeah. Can go to the next slide. Yeah, so why a digital product passport is required? So in this one, you can see uh, the currently, uh, you have a simple, uh, document which is moved from the tier two supplier to tier one supplier, producer, distributor, and uh, customer. So, and to the recycler. So, the document in between, uh, when the document is flowing, in, in the between the, the the information flow, the missing information is there in the flow. So, there may be a set of documents that are missing when it goes to tier two to recycler. Information is lost, and no standard guidelines for information to share. So, as of now. There is no standard which we can use uh, to share across the chain. But when this comes to digital product passport, you see uh, it will uh, solve this challenge where it will uh, have the DPP as a one of the key requirement where you will see that uh, all in the supply chain, if there is a defined uh, the standard or there is a defined uh, way of providing the data, to the next uh, actor in the supply chain is provided. Definitely, there will be no loss of information and uh, definitely um, there will be transparency in the supply chain. Yeah, we can go to the next slide. So that's the why the digital product passport is very important. And uh, the digital product passport is something um, uh, will drive a requirement, uh, will solve the challenges in the documentation and uh, transparency. So it's a part of a sustainable product regulation. The digital product passport will define the requirements and uh, it will also allow authorities to verify the compliance with the legal obligations. So currently it is focused uh, like the European uh, Commission is working on the uh, three prototypes, battery, textile and electronics to have it ready by uh, 2024. 
a digital product passcode requirement. So once it is ready for this three uh, or four prototypes, gradually those will be implemented across the different product groups as well. So the implementation, how the implementation will happen for the digital product passcode. So provide product related compliance requirements using unique identifier. So it can be something like a QR code. So definitely a, a manufacturer or importer will need to see verify or we need to provide information about the sustainability requirements in the on the product labeling or packaging or on the website which will provide all this sustainable information and it will use a decentralized system with European database for smart circular application. Registry information maintained by European Union with DPP. So this will solve all the trans, uh, challenges in terms of transparency and Santa said like uh, the greenwashing also will solve because everything will be transparent and all the data will be applied applicable. Yeah, we can move to next slide, shall we? Yeah. So what are the unique things? So DPP will include, uh, like you see, there is a um, product passport. It will, it uh, shall be connected to a data carrier, uh, like a unique code identifier, like it can be a QR code. So this this requirement is still under uh, uh, discussion, and uh, once it is finalized, as I told, for uh, even two to three sectors or the prototypes, once it is done, it will be available and uh, all the manufacturer will need to again follow the same with uh, documentation approach. Data carrier physically present on product and packaging and documentation. The data carrier unique uh, and unique code identifier shall comply with the ISO standard. The, and uh, the information on the date product passport shall be based on open standard developed with the Interpol level. That is important. And the DPP shall refer on the product model, batch or item. So it should be unique to each of the product or its model and even to the respective item. Free access. So every manufacturer should give a free access to um, it should be free. So anyone can go like even can, can something like can scan through mobile and can access the sustainable information through the DPP as a requirement. And uh, as we said, it uh, should be interoperable uh, with other product passport. So these are the key requirements uh, in terms of TPP. So yeah, we have a slide on European battery regulation. So already there is a, a, a battery regulation uh, from 2006-66 EC. So the, this battery regulation will be uh, repealed and will be amended in the new proposal um, as a part of the circular economy package. So it is applicable to it will be applicable to all the industrial automotive and electric vehicles who are using the battery, which is more than two kilowatt. And uh, it will be applicable to manufacturers in Europe as well as importers in the Europe and uh, distributor exporters. Everyone need to comply with this requirement. So why it is important uh, why does this uh, the changes in the EU, in the EU battery regulations are important because uh, now you see there is an increase in demand of the batteries. Uh, everywhere in the world, and when it comes to Europe, that is uh, they, that is something uh, expected to rise by 14 times. So, uh, so this is basically uh, there is also um, along with the battery demand, you see that the demand in the raw materials like cobalt, lithium cells, and uh, this this definitely called for update in the existing uh, updateation of battery directive which is, I guess, is more than 15 years old now. So this draft was published back into uh, 2022 uh, this year, and basically uh, the expected implementation has to be from the 2026. So what basically the uh, regulation will include is something uh, sustainable requirements also will come there, and definitely it will call to have uh, the battery passport requirements, which we see in the next slide. So what is the battery passport you see as you see in the slide? Uh, yeah, so it's starting from the Jan 2026. So it will call for a digital requirements for the complete supply chain for the battery uh, manufacturers. So 
the battery manufacturer will need to have the identification details on battery, the basic characteristics, then statistics on the performance and durability, the battery health details, the performance details, the recycle content, the hazardous substance present, then you have the material recovery targets, collection rate targets, carbon footprint declaration, and also it will come up with the C cell declaration, which was not there. It will also the battery manufacturer will need to include the C cell uh, declaration for the batteries. So more of those, these are similar to what we see in the sustainable product initiatives. So as a part of uh, battery regulation, the EU, EU battery regulation update, the EU battery, battery passports will also apply. And this is from 2026. So the supply chain, all the suppliers, uh, the supply chain for the battery need to ensure they need to provide all this data to the next um, to in the supply chain that has to be made available. And that is a that is a very um, uh, challenging task to uh, have everything been there to be made available. So there's the digital part of passport will solve this challenge where it will define the requirement of the documentation uh, and it can be used for all the uh, all the tier two, tier one suppliers and everyone in the supply chain. Yeah, so I think this is the last slide we have. Um, I guess if you have any questions. Uh, Gaurav, I would like to ask one question. Uh, just wanted to know like, uh, which are the products covered by the Sustainable Product Initiative? Yeah, so when, when it comes to uh, uh, the products which will be covered by Sustainable Product Initiative, so I'll say any physical good placed on the market or in the service, uh, including the intermediate products. So excluding few of the sector products like a food or medicines, right? So those will be exempted. But over a period of time, you will see every every product is placed in the Europe, manufactured, exported, imported, distrib distrib or the distributors also, everyone will be covered slowly. So the preliminary assessment by the Commission, European Commission, they have came up with uh, the top categories, product categories like a textile, furniture, um, then the tires and paints or lubricants manufacturers, as well as uh, iron, steel, aluminum, which basically have higher environmental impact. Also, they are going to launch a, uh, the survey, which they will try to add few more product groups. And uh, when it comes to setting up the requirements, those will be set up in uh, with respect to the product groups. So as you see in the Eco Design Directive, there are 31 product groups. So every product group has a unique uh, legislation or unique set of requirement document. So similarly, in this uh, sustainable product initiative, this requirements will be set to the product level. So when we say product level, you can have like uh, cooling products, which may contain your uh, refrigeration product, you, which may contain air conditioning products. Everything, the requirement will be set up as a product level group. And those requirements slowly need to be followed by the manufacturer. And then they have to also have the digital product passport requirements um, to follow on there. Um, like as you say, like a product packaging or the labeling or the documentation or on the website that will be important. Okay, uh, we have a question from Pooja. Uh, she is asking like, uh, do we have any standard tool for DPP? Yeah, as I said, the digital product passport uh, is one of the proposal from the, and it's one of the part of sustainable product initiative as a part of the uh, circular economic package. So DPP requirements, uh, it is in the uh, it's, it's in the stage of defining this uh, requirements and making it as a formal, I'll say formal standard, where all the manufacturers or all the companies who are following the scope will need to have those uh, put into defined format. So which is under this, uh, which is under uh, I'll say which is under uh, formation, and soon uh, we expect uh, once it is ready for the the three sectors, what we say, the textile, electronics. So after a year or so, you will see that the requirement is uh, being available. Yeah, uh, I'll just add one more point to it. It's like, say, it's uh, as uh, Gaurav said, it's by 2024, uh, we can expect the uh, standards out, 
once they implement in these um, highly uh, highly uh, uh, circular yeah. circular economy, whichever it follows, like say this uh, the textile, electronics, and uh, your battery. These are all of uh, high highly recyclable content, which has. So yeah. uh, when they follow this, uh, say we, they will be able to find out, say what are the uh, best ways to adapt uh, the uh, digital product product passport, and what in which areas like packaging at a product level, and uh, yeah. say at multiple labeling everywhere they would be able to see this, say how to implement in this, and we will be also say part of this. Um, a DPP uh, uh, process, say uh, we are aligned with the European uh, uh, say uh, Initiative, initiatives. Yeah. So uh, by 2024, we will be having that standard out. Yeah, yeah. So it will it will be it will be uh, it will be available. Uh, basically, the uh, the requirements will be set up. Uh, the requirements what we saw initial in the initial slide. Those are the things which will be covering as a part of the standard framework for the DPP digital product passport. So definitely it will be something as a QR code or something which is easy to uh, access. And when we say it is interoperable where uh, it can you can use it easily into supply chain. And when you have multiple products, the, com the product is made of multiple components. It will be easy to compile everything and then uh, finally declare, declare it as a um, uh, product level. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, can we expect the DPP process uh, in ILENSIS tool, ILENSIS compliance tool? Yeah, so we as as Santa said, we we are as one of the stakeholder where we are working with the digital Europe uh, the initiative to have these requirements uh, when it is under discussion and when it is under finalization and definitely your period of time. The existing tool what we uh, show one of the slide, it will in, it will be equipped to provide all the details required as for the DPP. Yeah, by um... okay. It is expected by end of, uh, say, by uh, 2024 when the uh, policies are set, and when the standards are set, we will be having in our uh, tool. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is another one like uh, why battery regulation is taken as a trial in DPP. Yeah. So as you said, the uh, like one of the thing is. Uh, Basically, the battery uh, already there is a battery directive. Uh, what we see in 2006 directive already this is there. And another reason is the the growth, the demand of the batteries. So if you see uh, when it comes to EV vehicles, and it is also linked to reducing the carbon footprints. Where uh, having the more EVs, it definitely will reduce the carbon footprint and improve the sustainability. So when it is growing with the demand, it's also having the more resources and more raw materials and the rare earth materials also being used. So definitely this calls for the amendment in the existing battery directive and to have the DPP because DPP will come with the sustainable product requirements. So when you have a DPP, definitely the battery providers will need to make sure uh, they provide you the data about the circularity, the reusability, the targets, and everything has to be transparent. So, uh, so it means that uh, it's like uh, most of the battery uh, manufacturers right now you see may not be having this requirement in place. So, to make it a circular, the battery uh, as an industry circular, this is important to have uh, uh, DPP requirements incorporated into uh, battery battery regulation. Okay, um, which are the cross functional areas uh, used in the DPP? If I'm getting your question correctly, you want to say wherever the DPP digital product password will be applicable, right? So as we said, like uh, slowly that sustainable product initiative will expand in scope and it will be applicable for the most of the products. So definitely the DPP will be applicable to textile industry, to the electronic industry, to uh, 
even to everywhere it will be slowly applicable and uh, uh, the dpp will drive the requirement to product group level uh, uh, once it is there in place after some some years but it will take some time initially it is focusing on this three sector textile battery and uh, electronics Um, so did we answer the question, questions? right? So do you have any other? Is it um, uh, Gopal? Is that addressed your question, or can we have the presentation? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, I think uh, we are recording this session, right, Sharvari? And uh, yeah, that will be available. Uh, yes, at... yes. Uh, we will be sending the uh, recorded uh, session link to all the participants, and also the uh, PPT will be shared, uh, which is being discussed during this uh, webinar. And for uh, any questions that uh, you have uh, not thought of right now you can email it to us and we will be happy to answer it. Uh, yes, the slides will be provided, Ross. Uh, surely we will be sharing the slide with you. The entire presentation will be shared with you. Uh, so are there any more questions? Yeah, I think uh, you can send us the questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can send us, uh, like as Sharvari said. And uh, if you have any more details required, you can connect us uh, uh, any specific requirements. Yes. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Santa and Gaurav for uh, giving us this presentation. And uh, I would like to thank all the participants who could make it today. And uh, in future, we will be planning a next webinar soon. Hope to see you there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.